So that's an example. Example one. That, that's the first reason why it's not called the reverse product rule. Here's the next reason. Example two. Integration by parts, despite the fact that it starts with the product rule, it's so powerful that it can help you with things that don't even look like products. Okay? Now, we don't know what the integral of inverse sine is. We don't know yet. Okay? But integration by parts will help us work it out. Now, remember I said you need to choose a u and a dv on dx. And it looks kind of like you don't have many options. But there is an option, right? There is actually a product hidden in here. And I've used this every time I've done a substitution. This is sine inverse times one. Okay. So the question then becomes, well, which one do I want to be u? And which one do I want to be dv on dx? Keeping in mind this arrow, right? This is v du. I want you to try it out. Make a choice. You got a 50-50 shot. And see if you can get out an integral from the other end. Off you go. As soon as you start writing your pair of primitives and your pair of derivatives, it becomes obvious to you which one has to be u and which one has to be dv on dx if what you're choosing from is these two, right? u has to be sine inverse. Why? Because it's one because you can't really Well, okay, so let's imagine if you're like, I'll just do it the other way and put sine inverse here. But to do integration by parts, you have to know what the integral of that dv on dx is. And that's what the question is. So sine inverse clearly can't go there. That must be one. Can you fill in the rest for me? These and then the other one is one over square root of one minus square Okay. Now, being that we had no choice, that kind of makes you think, well, I guess, I guess that's what I have to do. It's not immediately obvious that this green arrow is going to give you something useful, except it does. That is actually quite easy to integrate. What are we going to use? Reverse chain rule, right? I'm going to do some substitutions. I'd let u equal 1 minus x squared, because what's the derivative of 1 minus x squared? It's negative 2x, which is just a constant multiple of this, right? Okay, so let's give this a go. The integral of u dv is equal to u v. Take away the integral of v du. Okay, does that make sense? So I've got x on the square root of that. Make sense? Is that what your, your second line looks like? So that's my u v minus integral of v du. What do I do now? What, what did you guys do with that integral? Yeah. Right, u equals 1 minus x minus Okay, so if I do this, then I can work out what du on dx is. Or you can just or you can just Well, I mean, that's, that's what I just did, right? Yeah. So then what does that become? It becomes negative half integral 1 over u to the power of half. Integral. You've done, a, you've done another step. Yeah, I'll do that. So then 1 over would you use a different letter for this case? Yeah, I probably should. This is a bit this is a bit dicey. Make it like, I don't know. G, T, beta, Okay, now, I'm just going to, I actually already have my answer. I've already integrated it. I think you come down to, where's my one? It's just, yeah, the square root of, it's just um, this to the power of a half. Yeah? Whoops. Isn't it on to the half? No. Nope. No, it cancels out. Because you need it. Because remember, oh, this is yeah. to the power of negative a half, yeah? So oh, then when you integrate up, it becomes the power of a half, and then you have to divide by that, so the halves cancel. Okay? So you get to this. Again, weird. How do I know whether I got it right? Let's do it. Come on. I should, I should get the right thing, right? Okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me catch up. So I'm going to do... I'm going to write this as a... Um, in index form there. Okay, so I've got a u and I've got a v. So what happens first? Uh, v u dash plus u v dash. Yeah, does that look good? What about this guy? Now the great thing is, yeah, if I did this right, it should be that. But just to confirm, because I'm, just, I'm trying to verify, yeah? Uh, I don't want to rely too much on myself. I'm going to do the inside first, which is negative 2x, and then I'm going to do the outside, which is a half, 1 minus x squared to the power of, negative a half, cancel, cancel, 
this minus exactly lines up with that plus. You've got x on the square root of 1 minus x squared, so that all goes, and there you are. Okay, yeah. Do you have to test? Um, no, I'm testing for us right now because these are the okay. first times we've done it. And also because when I, when I look at an answer, like, um, oh, I've already dropped it off. When I look at an answer like, like this, <laughs> I have such a little understanding of the integral of sine inverse of x. I'm like, I have no idea whether that looks even remotely accurate. But it's, it's just beautiful that it just, it works. It works. Like what would have been an otherwise I'm sorry, I need to be taught a form for this. Like, I need to be given a result and then I can do it. Integration by parts has just taken everything you've known how to integrate and just taken it to an, an exponential level. I agree, it wasn't entirely obvious which one you should choose in this case. I chose u equals x, which gives me a du on dx. And I chose this as dv on dx. Now, that's not obvious because you think, oh, this is much more disgusting to integrate than this, okay? But again, the key, the CW would be so proud of me. The key is the green arrow, right? The key is the VDU and what you get out of those when you combine them. It is actually more useful for me to have a one there than it is to have an X squared on two here. Does that make sense? Because imagine, well, I mean, some of you actually have done this. Some of you started with this, right, as U. So you've got a derivative here, which is what? What is that? Minus uh, minus, minus 1 over two. 4 minus x to the, the, <laughs> the square root of 4 minus x. Yeah. Yeah? So that's what you've got here, but then you get x squared on 2 over here, and these two can't work together. You, you've got nothing, right? So even though that is a bit gross, because there's only the derivative of the inside, the integral of the inside function is just the constant, right? The, the derivative, I was right the first time. This is actually quite easy to do. When I do reverse chain rule, what am I going to get on this side? You're going to get a negative from the derivative of the inside, right? This power is going to go up to 3 over 2. So when you divide by 3 over 2, you get 2 over 3. 4 minus x, and there's that 3 over 2 you told me about. Okay? Now this, when I do the green arrow, that uh, VDU, I can still integrate that because it's just as easy to integrate as this guy is. Does that make sense? So, let's give this a whirl. The integral of u dv is equal to u times, this is v. Yep. Yep. Minus uh, v, sorry, the integral of v to thirds, 4 minus x to the 3 over 2, times du, which is just 1 with respect to x, okay? Now here, it looks a bit messy, but if you're patient with it, it's fine, because you've got uh, this guy out the front, minus 2x on 3. I'm just gonna leave it in that index form, because it doesn't become immediately nicer and neater. What happens when I integrate this? Okay, so for starters, just like I did before, a minus sign jumps out the front, which then cancels with that minus sign. This minus sign stays intact, he's outside, okay? That 2 over 3 gets joined by a 2 over 5 because this becomes 5 over 2, so you divide through, so 2 over 5. And then what happens in here? 4 minus x and the power increases. Plus a constant. Yep, you see what I've done? So let's tidy this thing up. Done. Okay. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you okay. could. Um, that would be that would be slightly better. But there you go. I'm happy with that. Um, and that's that's the way integration by parts. Take something like how else would you do this question? <laughs> you know, there are other parts, but they're all <laughs> but they're all much more difficult. Okay. And you can see, in, even though the numbers are gross. It's a, it's a small number of lines and we get there. And you, if you want, you can differentiate it. Or if you're lazy, you can stick it into Wolfram Alpha and you'll spit out the derivative automatically. So, yeah.